I hereby move that the Board of Supervisors of Brunswick County, Virginia reconvene in open meeting. Whereas the Board of Supervisors of Brunswick County, Virginia convene a closed meeting to this date pursuant to an affirmative recorded vote in accordance with the provisions of the Virginia Freedom of Information Act and whereas section 2.2.3711.8.1 whereas the Code of Virginia 1950 as amended requires a certification by the board that such closed meeting was conducted in conformity with Virginia law. And therefore, be it resolved that the board hereby certify that to the best of each member's knowledge on the public business matters lawfully exempted from open meeting requirements by Virginia law were discussed in the closed meeting to which this certification or resolution applies, and only such public business matters as were identified in the motion convening the closed meeting were heard, discussed, or considered by the board. Now, a motion to come out of closed session. There's a second. Second. <clears throat> okay, we have probably been in the second house discussion. All in favor say aye. Aye. All in favor roll call vote. Mr. Cataldo? Aye. Ms. Drummond? Aye. Mr. Jones? Aye. Mr. Tyler? Aye. Unanimous roll call vote, Mr. Chairman. And we are out of closed session. We're up to our public meeting. The board of supervisors meeting today. We would like to call the meeting to order. We have an invocation pledged by Ms. Drummond. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for all citizens who have come to gather to be a witness to the, uh, the business of Brunswick County. We ask that you touch us and, and allow us to be on one accord on this evening. Let us realize that sometimes we can agree to disagree, but let's do it with professionalism. Lord, we thank you for the young people who are here on tonight for recognition. Let them know that this is just another step in their, their movement to success. We ask that we conduct the business for Brunswick County citizens with open hearts and open minds for the betterment of our county. These and all things we ask in your name. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Hey, thank you, gentlemen, for the this invitation. Then we're down to the um, approval of the agenda. Mr. Chair, under 19 new business, add part-time building inspector position. Okay, are there, are there any other additional lesions from the agenda? If not, what's the pleasure of the board? Make a motion, Mr. Chair, that we approve the agenda with the said amendment. Motion has been made to approve the agenda with the second amendment. Probably in the second. In our discussion, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed nay. Thank you. At this time, like, welcome all the citizens to the meeting tonight. We ask you to have a phone, put them on vibrate, please. Down to the um, approval of the minutes. You had a chance to review the minutes. What's the board pleasure? Mr. Chair, I had an opportunity to review uh, the Brunswick County Board of Supervisors uh, meeting minutes for November the 7th. Uh, 2012, and a special meeting on the 14th, 2012. Uh, so therefore, I make a motion that we accept the minutes as prepared. Motion has been made to accept the minutes as presented. Is there a second? Second. Part of the second. Now, discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed nay. Thank you. Department of Transportation. Yes, Mr. Chairman, just here to see if you have any questions on our monthly maintenance report. Are there any questions? <coughs> board members? No questions. No questions. Okay, uh, as you prepare to move into the, to the new year, I just want to uh, bring to your attention we need to keep on the radar uh, the secondary six year plan. Uh, historically, we've been doing a, a workshop in the month of March and advertising the public in, in April. The public hearing in April is required by law. The, the workshop is not, it's entirely up to you ladies and gentlemen. We don't have any additional funds, you know, right now for the secondary six-year plan. So 
uh, a workshop is not really necessary, but if you all want to meet and we, you know, have a workshop and go over it, you know, that we'd be glad to do that. Just, you know, let us know. Okay. Any other any beat out issues while we're here? Okay. Thank you. Appreciate it. You see your attachments of beat out Department of Transportation. And you have a um, request for letter of support. Um, yes, Mr. Chair. There is a letter in your packet from Mayor Parrish, Town of Alberta. And she is requesting that the board support Town Council's letter of request to have the trees at the Alberta I-85 interchange cleared or removed for safety reasons. <coughs> Sam, the mayor asked for letter of support. She's asking for a letter of support. Um, what's the pleasure of the board? I move, I move that we give Mrs. Parrish a letter of support from the county asking that uh, this VDOT remove the trees. Okay. Second. Motion has made by Mr. Jones, second by Ms. Drummond in our discussion. All in favor of the letter of support, say aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Thank you. Now, um, special presentations. Um, Jane Solomon Russell. Middle School Football Team, Southside District Middle School Conference 2012 Champions. We ask them to come forward. We have um, something for them.
at this time, will the board members have anything they'd like to say before the young people leave out the building? Okay, congratulations. <laughs> All right. Good job well done. Get the academics up, just like the sports. Thanks, Chair. All right. We're down to department presentations. TransTech um, Alliance. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. Ms. Walrich. It's nice to be here tonight. I guess you know that I'm here because we have gone through a branding process and we were granted some money from the state to um, take a look at our name. TransTech, of course, is how we started off. And the way we got that name was taking transportation and technology, two of our greatest resources, and putting that together to call ourselves an alliance. Well, we got a little bit of criticism for that because we could be anything and we could be anywhere. And once we started discussing it, we really wanted to be identified with the Commonwealth of Virginia because we're known for how easy it is and how great it is to do business here. So we started this process, and I'm going to sort of take you through it. Okay. Okay, these were our project goals. We started off with um, looking at a, developing an economic development brand for the six-county, one-city region. And we reflected the unique economic development assets of the region in doing this. And we wanted to differentiate ourselves from the rest of the regional markets by promoting what distinctive attributes we had and, the, and demonstrating the value that they have. And finally, we evaluated the TransTech name to determine if it should be changed or modified to better reflect the economic development image of the region. In looking at our attributes, we found that we have great location, transportation, training, legacy, and resources. Of course, the location of TransTech Alliance is critical. Um, it's a region that's positioned within and among some of the most well-known business locations in the world. And we are in the center of the entire East Coast, which makes us great for um, position to uh, be close to the Port of Virginia. And in doing this um, rebranding, we also identified key words. And for the location, they were Virginia, Research Triangle, Tidewater, Richmond, Southside, Region, and Connection. Next, we had the great transportation backbone, and that's critical, of course, for our future success. And rail and road access is essential, and we have 85, 95, 58, 360. We have Norfolk Southern and CSX. The region also features numerous job and skill training programs for area residents and is emerging as a key location for agencies who conduct specialized training. And I know you all are familiar with the fact that we partner with Southside Virginia Community College. They are in all seven of our, our jurisdictions. And of course, Fort Pickett and Pickett Park, which is renowned for its government services. The agricultural and manufacturing legacy of TransTech Alliance region remains strong. The area's legacy industries now incorporate cutting-edge technologies, and the area retains much of its small-town charm. Keywords there were agriculture, tobacco, small-town, family-friendly, history, and ideals. A key competitive advantage for the region is just how easy it is to get things done. We don't have um, on the books in in any of our jurisdictions, any kind of fast tracking as far as zoning or um, any kind of ordinances go. However, 
if we have a key industry who's trying to locate, I think all of our jurisdictions work as much as they possibly can to make things as easy as possible for key businesses. So our key words are cooperation, alliance, proactive, lakes, timber, agriculture, workforce, and technology. Now for the proposed identity, we wanted the name to of course relate to our role in history and the future of the nation. Our tagline, we have um, put together three words that describe the region, and the typeface we wanted to be contemporary and bold. Um, even though we're proud of our history, we wanted it to look fresh. And the colors, I think you're going to appreciate, when they were here, um, this group that we worked with, Arnett Muldrow out of Greenville, South Carolina, they took over 800 photographs, which you'll see some that you will be able to identify. And so we extracted the colors from some of the photographs that they took to come up with um, what represents <coughs> the And then the iconography, three variations which allow us great flexibility in advertising and, and any kind of branding use we want to use. Okay, these are the colors. And you can see that there's um, bright leaf tobacco, dark leaf tobacco, our forest products, the um, lakes that we have with clean water and clean air, and then finally our pine forest. And our region is a place where settlers planted the seeds of entrepreneurship in early days of our nation. <coughs> Today we are six counties and one city where the spirit of innovation flourishes. We grew as a place where farming and timber fueled the growth of the Commonwealth of Virginia into one of the most prosperous and dynamic states in the nation. We value our easy way of life, our small town flavor, and rural landscapes. We're grounded for centuries as a crossroads of the eastern United States. Our interstate and rail connections link us to our neighbors, Virginia's Tidewater, Greater Richmond, and North Carolina's Research Triangle. We are cultivating the technologies of the future, with industrial sites offering the most sophisticated broadband access in the nation dynamic training programs for our dedicated workforce, and traditional industries using the most advanced technologies to produce the highest quality products. We are a place where common sense makes the, most, the cost of doing business competitive, where access to the mid-Atlantic is beyond compare, and the growth potential is unlimited. We are a place where quality of life is unparalleled, small towns thrive, and personal connections make the difference in how business works. Cultivate success with Virginia's Growth Alliance. This is our new name, and I think we're all pretty proud of, of getting there together. So you can see we have the roots coming out of our seven localities, but we're still the state of Virginia, and, um, and we're growing. Now, the next um, several slides are just an example of how we can use this tagline in our advertising and promotion. So we cultivate is going to be just the basis, and we can do everything from industry, quality, pride, warmth, health, growth, knowledge, success, connections, and best of all, quality time. But we can really do most anything with it. And then finally, they put together um, this V, which has all the icons in it of some of our target markets, which include um, of course, the forest, the forest industry, wood products, technology. Um, you can see the cloud there and the um, motherboard and a lot of different agricultural products. So I think we pulled it all together. That might be a little busy, but we can take any of those out or add any icons that we want to um, describe what we're trying to do. So that's any questions? Any questions about board members? I hope you like it. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Okay. Yes, sir. What's the device on? Well, I'm due. You got a presentation? I need a very short one. I do, sir. All right. Share the bar. Appropriation. Chairman, board members, I appreciate uh, very, very 
few minutes, short few minutes of your time. Uh, just a, a brief presentation. Uh, you may recall back in February, uh, I uh, had a study done, uh, done by Mosul Architects, it was dated February 8th, and it gave a, an analysis of repurposing the, the Brunswick County Jail. As we all know, the jail was closed in May of this year as we go to the new regional jail. And I had I asked and envisioned going forward in the future of repurposing the jail and office space. All of my patrol investigations take over the second floor of this building. I am not here tonight. I am not here tonight to ask for any of that money and appropriations as it deals with the <coughs> jail. I'm here on another scope, but I do want to show what I've been doing proactively with the jail, using inmate labor and one of my jailers, uh, Freddie Harrison, a licensed contractor. He's been supervising a, an inmate labor crew of five men. And for the past six months, I think you'd be pretty amazed at what we've done. So that's what I just want to show you, things that, that we've done proactively without spending taxpayer money of uh, just using inmate labor to what you're going to see. I think you'd be pretty amazed. Um, so the point I'm here is obviously to ask for a, an appropriation. That appropriation I generated. How did I generate that? In two things. All the kitchen equipment in the, in the jail, as you know, the jail had commercial equipment, the kitchen equipment that was put there in 1990 when it was built. All of that um, equipment was sold at surplus last month when the county did a big surplus sale. And you'll see on the left side, for example, that's a, a triple sink, and a, and a commercial triple sink. There were two of those in the commercial kitchen. All of those things were sold, and the total proceeds from the kitchen equipment during the surplus sale, there was a low bid process, oh, I'm sorry, a high bid process, uh, was $3,630.33. That's how much money was um, created on that sale, just in kitchen equipment. <coughs> so this shows you a before and after, uh, just a you know, small visualization. The, the after picture on the right is a stripped kitchen there. There's nothing there but the center block wall and the concrete floor. Uh, and so, in going forward, obviously, in repurposing that room, uh, there, there are some you know, different perspectives we'll use it for. On your left is inmate or correctional toilets and sinks. There were uh, 14 of those in the facility, and uh, we stripped all of those out, saw those stainless steel scrap metal. On your right is the finished product. All the plumbing has been capped off, the wall has been uh, cinder blocked back over and painted, and you can see the petition wall, that white ring. And I think, I'm not going to shoot anybody, but I do have a little laser point I can uh, use, which looks like a pistol, so nobody has to be too long. But you can see that little white ring there was a, a petition wall, obviously, for privacy. So all those things have been completely stripped out of the jail. On your left are the bed bunks that the inmates originally um, slept in. This is, we have two dormitories, and the one on your left is obviously the, the before. The one on the right is a stripped down, completely stripped um, office space. We'll use that for a large office area space, put cubicles in and, and desk in in the future. You know, the, the old shower will be, a, you know, just... Just an output papers and supplies and things in a little supply closet, and then you have all this large area to put just cubicles in. Uh, you know, it is a stripped down jail. The only thing that needs to happen in that office now is there's no electrical outlets, there's no data, there's no telephone, there's no flooring. But other than that, I mean, that's a pretty small scope considering the things we've done. And I'll show you, obviously, later on the slide the things we've continued to do. Uh, on your left again, there's all these grill gates. Uh, there were, let's see, how many total? There was a total of 15 of these grill gates. There were 42 of the beds, and all of those have been cut out. You see on the right, the finished product. Nice, clean hallways, just cutting out all the grill gates and everything in the building. And let's see. Again, this was a visitation area. It was just a petition window. You see those things there? Those have been completely removed, and we will send a block off that back left corner there and create another office there. <coughs> And none of these, were, we had architects come in, so none of these were load-bearing. We haven't destroyed the building or anything, but we've been working with engineers and architects. We paid, I paid for them out of my drug forfeiture, so I did not go and spend any allocated money. I, that's money that we generate through forfeiture and seizure. And I spent that money for these study and these people come down and do that work out of drug forfeiture. This was master control. This was a huge, huge, big computer uh, system that was a whole, the brain to run out of jail. You can see that room there has been completely stripped. Uh, this was a, what we had on the, on the right-hand side was a, what we call the observation tank and or the, the drunk tank. On the, right, the left-hand side was a small office, and we removed the wall in between and merged them into, into a larger room for a small conference room yeah, for future needs. Uh, security doors, you know, there were 
like 15 of those, obviously very large, heavy grates on the street doors. All of those have been removed. Trustee dorms, these were very, very large dorms. These, you know, for more, um, more trustee status inmates, there were two bunks in each room. You can see all the grill gates have been stripped. These will now be office cubicles. You'll see there's four of them. One, two, three, four of them. There's two sides of trustee dorms. This will create eight office spaces for supervisors and things. And then getting into the, the, um, the, the numbers. In the original study, and this it is a little bit blurry, but what's, what's uh, pretty significant, if I get to the last page, and, I, and I've got copies, and y'all were actually giving copies I gave this morning. Um, in the original study, it shows that to repurpose the building, what Mosul gave y'all in February and I gave y'all, was a total of $2.7 million. With everything we've done, all the work that we've done using MA label the last six months, and all the, the revenues we've generated, and I'm going to go into the poundage of scrap metal, we've generated over 29,000 pounds of scrap metal that solid waste has worked with us and we've taken and made a profit off of that. Between the scrap metal and the kitchen sales, uh, we've revenued over $4,700, or actually more than that. And anyway, motions came back now when we revised the study, and the number now is $700,000, $2 million that we've cut off of it. Now, we've, we've shrunk the scope, but at the same time, it's well over half a million dollars of work that we've used MA labor for to strip this jail. And I was budgeted $750, and I believe to date we've spent about $900 that I've spent in cinder block or mortar or bits or, or blades to, to cut out things, do things with. But we've spent about $900 to date, and they've projected we've easily saved over half a million dollars and removing 29,000 pounds of scrap metal and, and doing all the proactive things we've done with the inmate label in the past six months. So my request tonight is uh, for that line item. Line item, um, repair and maintenance budget line item. I am asking if you will allocate or appropriate the kitchen equipment money, the revenues that I created, the $3,630.33. Scrap metal. It was 29,000 pounds of scrap metal. And I thought, man, I'm going to get really rich off of that. Well, at $8.50 per 100 pounds, it came back to $2,260. So not, not so lucky on the rich part. But... It was still proactive. I, mean, I think you know it was something that, that we generated revenue using MA label, and I am asking to split that money with Ella, with a wet solid waste. They were a partner of mine in helping remove the scrap metal and get it to the to the scrap yard. So I'm asking, so my total amount I'm asking for it's it's two numbers. I gave you the first one. The second one is one thousand one hundred thirty, which is half of the scrap metal profits. So my total number is four thousand seven hundred sixty dollars and thirty three cents. That is the exact amount of money that was generated using MA labor, being proactive, being creative, um, and, and I believe saving well over half a million dollars in the future scope of what we're going to do. Now, again, I'm not here to ask you to fix the jail tonight. I'm, I'm asking you just for that amount of money um, to be appropriate to me. I hope um, so I can keep the ball moving. I mean, I, I can't go and, and, you know, again, I can't fix the $700,000 issue, but I can still keep the ball moving and doing little things. We can paint, we can fix lighting. You know, there's a lot of things we can be creative with. Sooner or later, obviously, I'll run out of things we do, and we're going to have to you know, bite the bullet, but we'll cross that bridge and we'll get there one day. But this is just something that we've been doing for the past six months, and uh, I hope you would think it was being very creative and proactive. And so I've spent $900, feel like I've saved over half a million dollars, and you know, I'm asking you to allocate $4,700 more, so 47 dollars so I can keep the ball moving. So that's my request tonight. And any questions, I'll be more than happy to answer any questions you might have about any of them. Any questions about the board members? No. What were those, the numbers again? 2,000 and something? Uh, the, the kitchen and the uh, scrap metal or the jail renovation? You gave me 1130 Yes, ma'am. Two numbers. The kitchen equipment was $3,630.33. The scrap metal was 1130 And those two equal 47 60 33 And again, I, the scrap metal total was twenty-two sixty. I split it in half with Ms. Ripley because of her partnership with me. So that was just a fair thing to do. Any questions about board members? As chair, I'd like to commend you on that. Um, it's very been, it's been proactive, no question about that. Um, so, what's the pleasure of the board? So, Mr. Chair. The motion has been made by Ms. Drummond. There's second. Second. Probably move as, probably moving second out of discussion. All in favor say aye. Aye. aye.
oppose me. Thank you. Thank you very much. We're down to citizen comments. Um, citizen comments. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. There are four citizens signed up this evening. The first is Wayne Hyde. Okay, before we start citizen comments, um, we want we appreciate citizens coming out and expressing their concerns. Um, as a chair, I also ask you not to make personal contact uh, com comments toward um, staff. I, we do appreciate y'all coming out and that's what we ask for, for ask from citizen comments. Are there another board members like to have anything to say before we start? Mr. Mr. Cotaldo, yes sir. Mr. Chairman, I have a couple of comments. Uh, first, we, we all recognize First Amendment rights and you have a right to say whatever you want to say. Uh, however, the display of ungentlemanly conduct last month was, was ugly. Uh, lack of respect and personal attacks was over the top. As many of the speakers were BBG members, I checked with the BBG leadership. Excuse me, Mr. John. Could you speak into your mic? I'm yeah, sure, so you can't hear it in the back. Very light, I can't. I'm sorry, Mr. Kyle. I want anybody to hear it. All right. Want me to start over? Be fine, please. Okay. Uh, first off, we, we recognize uh, First Amendment rights, of course. But the display of ungentlemanly conduct last month was ugly. The lack of respect and personal attacks was over the top. As many of the speakers were BBG members, I checked with the BBG leadership to see what was going on. I was assured that the outburst was not BBG planned. The BBG urges its members to be respectful to everyone and to avoid personal attacks. So I'm directing these comments at the individuals involved. Political discourse in Virginia has always been respectful and centered on actions, issues, and statements, not individuals or personalities. This is how gentlemen behave. I think that last month was just an unusual situation that just got out of, out of control. I know most of you that spoke last morning and have always considered you gentlemen. Please uh, reconfirm by your future actions that this is true. Okay. All right, with that said, um, Wayne citizen. Hyde.
the uh, offices being accessible for wheelchair, I was in the office and paid my taxes last week. And there's two steps, one go up and one go down. No wheelchair can get up and down those steps. So I say they're not accessible. They're accessible to get in the building. So I asked one of the ladies in there how a wheelchair <coughs> patient is going to get in there to pay his time. He said, oh, we have to come out to see them. I saw nobody out in the hall. I saw no way <coughs> for them. To the division of motor vehicle that it was chair, uh, wheelchair accessible. I don't think it is. Thank you. Gene Wiley. Gene Wiley, 220 Reed Creek Road, Fremont, Virginia. A lot of things we could talk about, but you know it's the joyous season, and we've had we've had an event for a year. But I just want to thank everybody, welcome everybody, and I want to wish you all a joyous and happy New Year. Hope that you get to spend a lot of quality time with your family and friends, and enjoy the season for what it is. My name is Wally Seco. I live at 1031 Alexander Drive, Bracey, Virginia. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, county staff. And in that spirit, I want to wish each of you and your family a blessed Merry Christmas and a joyful, happy new year. Okay, let's see some of comments. Down to from St. Calendar, report. So moved, Mr. So moved, Mr. Chair. Motion has been made. There's second. Second. I move and second. Other discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed, me. Thank you. From the County Public School Monitor report, you have a chance to review that. Down to the Finance Director report. Approval disbursements. Total $698,991.70. And if there are no questions regarding said disbursement, staff is requesting approval. You have a chance to review disbursements. What's the pleasure of the board? So move. Motion has been made by Mr. Jones. Yes, second. Second. Probably move the second by Mr. Calvin. In our discussion, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Thank you. Next, I have for you the Electoral Board, fiscal year 13 additional appropriation. The Electoral Board received $5,000 from the State Board of Elections towards the purchase of the optical scanner used in the most recent election. An appropriation is needed to account for the expenditure. The recommendation is to accept and appropriate $5,000 to the applicable revenue and expenditure line items in the Fiscal Year 13 Electoral Board Departmental Budget. For the recommendations of the Senate, the Board. So moved. Motion has been made. There is second. Second. I move and second. Now discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed nay. Next, I have for you a fiscal year 13 appropriation for the Brunswick County Housing Needs Assessment. In February of 2012, the, the Virginia Department of Housing and Community De Development awarded Brunswick County $15,000 to implement planning activities that will result in a strategic housing needs assessment. The board approved the planning grant in April of 2012. The funds need to be appropriated in fiscal year 13 to properly account for the expenditures related to the grant. Staff is recommending to appropriate $15,000 to the applicable revenue and expenditure lines and the General Capital Projects Fund. Okay, here the recommendation. And finally, I have for you the fiscal year 14 budget schedule. Um, included in your packet is a draft copy of the fiscal year 14 budget schedule for your review and consideration. 
the opportunity to do that this uh, information piece. Thank you. Thank you. And Dr. Director Report.
She sent her dates in. Yes. Uh, the third is what? Thursday? Thursday. Everybody looking at that calendar? They were tag ass, you know what I mean? Yeah. That's okay. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> it's gone. I'm checking it down. Okay. Thursday, where are you? Thursday, where are you? What time? 30. What's the typical sign? You do a 6.30? 6.30 good with everybody? Yeah, it doesn't take very long. Okay, 6.30? Alright. The motion is, can we have a motion to that effect? Mr. Chair, I make a motion that we schedule our 2013 organizational meeting for January the 3rd at 6.30 p.m. Motion has been made there. Second. Second. Probably will be second on discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? 